I've been very long uh, Silky Peaks user, and recently I have started working with uh, the EXO PhotoLab 8. I actually like both of it. Now, today, first of all, I'm going to do some nice and quick edit. When I say quick edit, I mean that I'm not going to do any kind of, um, you know, retouching or anything. All I'm going to do is to do some basic distortion correction, you know, the chromatic aberration, all these default, uh, default ones. And then I'm going to export both of them right as a JPEG and then compare side by side. But now, and then I'm going to explain you why I prefer one over another. While you're watching this video, please don't forget to comment in the description below, in the comment section below, to share your opinions. Now, first of all, I'm going to start with the DXO, where I'm going to just um, turn off all the um, all the default fix except vignetting because it has an automatic vignetion. And then again, color, I'm not going to touch anything at all. I have to make sure that is the right image though. The name of the file, uh, name of the file is right here somewhere. Yep, that's exactly what it is. And then in the noise reduction, I'm going to turn on the lens softness composition and then unsharp mask. Obviously, I'm going to turn it, the, uh, turn on the default one. Same I'm going to do in the Silky Peaks, obviously. And I'm going to turn on the denoising. But because it's uh, 1000, probably deep prime is... Just a prime is sufficient. I don't need a deep prime or anything. Prime is already enough, in my opinion, for a... Uh, 1000 uh, ISO of a Nikon D800 which is still today one of the best camera for the money honestly it's one of the amazing Nikon full frame high resolution camera that you can buy under budget uh, I put it literally right next to uh, the Canon 5D Mark II like they're both in my opinion legendary now, once it's done, um, the, the automatic distortion correction, at least I think I have a right to do that. But the, because it's a Tamron 24 to 70 lens, so I don't need to do much. If this video is very helpful to you until this point, then I highly appreciate your help. If you go down into the description below and click in the links necessary in order to chip in some money for coffee so that I can make more videos for you and for myself as well and thank you for watching this video and then i am just gonna look around if there is anything else i need to do i don't think so so i'm not going to touch anything else i'm just going to keep it as it is remember is untouched i did not touch anything at all so i'm going to go do the same thing here in silky pics where what i did i i have the default noise reduction and the default sharpening on so i did not touch i'm going to also uh, turn on the vignetting because i did the same thing in uh, dxo and the chromatic aberration on automatic version and the lens um, lens profile so i'm going to turn on first the uh, the, the distortion correction from tamron and uh, that's not the right lens i'm looking for the 24 to 70 so give me one moment it should be somewhere 24 to 70 there you go so i'm going to double check with the right name in my metadata so the lens is the vr 24 to 70 f 2.8 This is exactly what I did. It is, I believe, I don't see any difference between any of them. So SP. Um, I really have to trust on my gut here because it has VR 24 to 70. So uh, I really am not sure which one to look for. So I'm going to just uh, trust on my gut and then leave it as it is. Anyway. Uh, is there anything else that I did in DxO? I don't think so. I don't think I did anything on DxO. Now, 
I'm going to go to DxO and then going to export. So file, export to application. No, uh, why I'm doing that? Export to disk that I was looking for. Export to disk. I'm going to export obviously the high quality version. So turn on the standard output. Turn off the different HDD. And anything else here, uh, make sure that it says DxO to make sure that it's, uh, I know exactly which one is what and I'm going to export. It might take some time. Now, while the DxO one is exporting and I'm going to move on to the uh, silky pigs, I have to mention few important things here. Now, one of the important thing is the noise reduction. Regardless the how I'm fascinated by silky pigs, you have to remember that silky pigs do not have the state-of-the-art noise reduction that DxO has, let alone the, their uh, lens correction, the lens softness that it let it be as well, uh, the distortion correction. I already said that um, they have their the best noise reduction option available. So, which unfortunately silky pigs do not possess yet. And uh, they also have, um, you know, the other like a very good quality HSL tool. But I'm, in my opinion, silky pigs also has pretty much the same kind of tool, which we're going to um, show you right now, actually. Because, for example, here you have the DXO, the HSL which is actually here now this one you can actually find it right there for example it does more or less the same thing you select a color of the no you select one of the hue and then you just uh, work on the saturation um, uh, lightness and it's literally changed the color i'm going to show you in a moment for example you select a color like say the green and it select the color and then you can literally change the hue if you want to. You can either make it green, the uh, purple, you can mess with it as, as much as you want. I'm going to turn it on, which is, and then of course I didn't show you, but you can also work on the saturation and the lightness, which is basically the same thing as the HSL tool. Uh, so, you know, there is a lot of similarity in there. And when it comes to, Local adjustment, unfortunately, one thing that Silky Picks has that um, DxO doesn't, which is, don't forget to go down the description below to check out all the discounts and reductions and special offers available for different softwares. Thank you. I'm going to show you literally right now. For example, the polygon. You see, you can literally select the polygon tool uh, as much as you want and uh, work on literally in that location you can work on the hue for instance i'm going to do that just to mess with it a little bit you can uh, work on the saturation lightness contrast just like you can do the dxo not only that you can also uh, you know select a particular color of that very area and then work only on that work only on that how amazing is it this is for me is revolutionary which dxo do not have it if to, in order to do exact same thing with the polygon you need need nick collection nick collection has a polygon tool where you can use you work on a specific area and you can change the color hue hsl whatever etc etc but anyway you can actually do the same thing with the brush tool for instance if you take the brush and brush it everywhere which takes a little bit of time not more than the polygon tool and you know you can work on a specific color for instance i'm going to brush the maximum let's say you want to change select the blue and then change the blue whatever you can do so so nonetheless i would rather have polygon tool in my opinion um so 
each of them has their strength each of them has their weakness silky piece for me is slightly slow it could be more a little bit more fast it could be just a little bit more fast but unfortunately it's not i'm going to export it right now and uh silky picks i'm going to do sp and make sure that is the best quality jpeg i'm exporting it's the best quality and the highest quality available and then i'm going to click develop while I'm doing it, I'm going to turn off the DXO. Make sure that it's not eating uh, my resources. So there is another important thing that I personally think, and I'm a little bit biased to Silky Peaks, even though the DXO is just extraordinary when it comes to manipulation. Uh, and uh, many other tools and its efficiency and speed especially DxO do use the graphics card silky Peaks doesn't however silky Peaks natively support uh, Fuji film X trans file literally it does it literally works directly the it can read the camera settings and leave it as it is so if you have a nikon camera or even panasonic and you have uh, set up the film profile film simulation and um, whatever the camera settings is literally bring it over to the camera you don't have to touch it at all and just to n let you know that uh, uh, the, the fuji's own software is based on silky Peaks engine so that's that now we're going to check on side by side I'm going to turn off all of it and then there you go. I'm going to compare side by side. So this is our DXO version and our uh, Silky Peaks version. So DXO and Silky Peaks. Now Right up the bat, Silky Peaks do look, Silky Peaks, sorry, uh, the DXO does look a little bit um, more natural. Uh, DXO looks a little bit more sharp, obviously. I think it's something to do with the noise reduction, in my opinion. But there is a big but. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> it sounds funny actually. Uh, excuse my language. First of all, DXO file size is 21 megabyte, about just over 21. Silky Peaks exported 30.5 megabyte, enormous. So that's one thing. Second, second thing is that somehow Silky Peaks has really nice grad gradation of the highlight. It does not look crunchy. It has a nice fade in my eyes, in my biased eyes, where the DXO tried to recover shadow, sorry, highlight. However, it makes it look a little bit contrasty. So I find the Silky Peaks has a nice distribution of the shadow to highlight or dark to bright, where um dxo kind of try to work on this curve which you know obviously can uh do something on dxo to match it silky peaks however but without any editing silky peaks kind of has a nice control over its highlight in my opinion and when it comes to color my hand this i know my hand obviously <laughs> so it does make it look quite natural where uh, DxO looks pretty freaking clean. That does not mean, clean means natural. It does look a bit more brownish, slightly. However, DxO file is very clean. And Silky Peaks has kind of like a grainish look in the bokeh area. So bokeh, um, if you look at the bokeh, the blur area, DxO looks much nicer. And the Silky Peaks, not really. Again, when you print it, nobody cares. 
You know, they just care about how beautiful the both images uh, images are. So my s resume of the silky pigs and the DXO that each of them their own advantage. But the one thing I must say about the silky pigs that the silky pigs is the only software that I know that you pay once and you get the update forever. And even if the new version came in, the old version will always get the latest uh, lens and camera support immediately. Which DxO sometimes you have to pay the upgrade, obviously. Apart from that, they are both phenomenal software, and in my opinion, they both deserve fantastic uh, reputation, considering that they both do not, uh, you know, force you to subscribe to anything, and also none of them are, you know, they are, one is Japanese and one is French, so they are both kind of like a outside the Adobe planet. So, you know, you can you can be happy with both of it, but in my biased, uh, you know, eyes, Silky Peaks has a better nat natural look, I, would say, I should say natural, where the DxO looks perfectly clean in terms of sharpness and col uh, not color, sharpness and noise and blur area correction. So that's my take. Please comment in the comment section below because it's very important to know your opinion. Take care of yourself and bye-bye.